Hi right, guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, and I do mean over the top beautiful day. Here in paradise in the Point Lonesome Swamp in the oasis of freedom on this outlandishly gorgeous, it is Friday, that would be December 24th, 2021, so... I fully understand that my uh, ecological meltdown roundup rant is already my least viewed video of the week and it's Christmas Eve so I do understand that I am talking to myself so uh, fortunately it's uh, being Christmas Eve a little bit a little bit light on the manga bay Roundup and a little bit of hopium and holiday cheer. We're going to skip through all of that crap. So uh, I'm just going to touch on a few of the stories worth mentioning about how this planet is going straight down the toilet here on Christmas Eve while we all deck the bowels with bales of holly or whatever the hell that song is. And, uh, so I'm going to let the little Christmas dog head off and get him a squirrely and uh, let's uh, see what visions of sugar plums we can pull from uh, mangabay.com, see what's on the minds of Rhett Butler and the boys and girls over at mangabay.com on Christmas Eve of 2021. No, we'll get one more. I was thinking, no, so next Friday will be New Year's Eve, <coughs> where we will uh, do our final one. All right. So as I say, guys, I'm, I'm touching on about a fourth of these stories uh, in here. You know, more and more about these Congo peatlands being screwed. Uh, all right. Let's check in where even uh, Rhett Butler isn't swallowing the greenwashing bullshit from coming out of Indonesia. A wary welcome for Indonesia's Green Port Initiative to clean up shipping. Yes, <laughs> Indonesia is launching a program to make the country's ports more environmentally friendly in an effort to reduce its carbon emissions and protect the marine ecosystem. Yes, the so-called the so-called Green Port Initiative will encourage greater use of clean energy and strengthen environmental protection, a top Indonesian official says. Some marine observers have welcomed the initiative, saying it is a crucial step toward achieving Indonesia's emissions reductions target. But others say the green port initiative will only serve to cover up the environmental impacts of the government's port building spree and will benefit private investors over the general public. <laughs> Do you think so? Um, okay. Let's go to over to the Democratic Republic of the Congo. I absolutely love that word, democratic. Deadly raids are the latest case of abuse against indigenous in DRC Park. So you will see how democratic the Republic of the Congo is. The number of attacks by security forces, whatever probably they mean federal government, democratic security forces, on indigenous Batwa villages 
in the Democratic Republic of Congo's Kaubinga National Park have tripled in the past four weeks. Yes. Soldiers and park rangers are accused of burning several villages to the ground, killing one man and possibly a pregnant woman. Uh, yes. Uh, indigenous right groups have demanded a formal investigation. Uh, park officials have denied that there are any Batwa communities officially living inside the park. And this gets back to this whole debate about should national parks be declared human exclusion zones. Well, that begs the question if, uh, you know, you create the park. Anyway, that is, it is one of the big messy things. Now, I, of course, generally support the notion of making any sort of a national park a human exclusion zone, but that might be a little bit uh, overdoing it. One of the uh, conundrums during the collapse of a planet. Uh, anyway, skipping ahead. Uh, here's. It looks to be Noble Savage Day here in uh, Manga Bay at Christmas Eve. There's more articles about planet eaters attacking indigenous people than actually attacking the planet itself. All right, we have a new flavor of vanilla farming aiming to stop deforestation in Madagascar. Yes, <laughs> I would say the new flavor is the bullshit vanilla. Anyway, now here's an interesting corona panic. Uh, story talking about conundrums. Lockdown underscores Uganda's over-reliance on tourism to fund, com to fund conservation. So right, when the corona panic first broke out in 2020, Uganda quickly shut down parks like Bwindi Impenetrable National Park to protect the gorillas and chimpanzees from getting infected, you know, from, uh, from tourists giving the gorillas and chimpanzees corona panic. But unfortunately, tourism provides up to 60% of the Uganda Wildlife Authority's operating revenue. There you go. So take a guess what happened. So they shut down the park and poaching shot through the roof during these economic lockdowns as villagers entered the park to hunt for food, otherwise known as bushmeat, uh, or an income, you know, to sell the bushmeat because they were getting no income from the tourists who were not allowed in because they would give the gorillas corona panic. So instead of dying of corona panic, uh, the animals uh, were just shot for bushmeat. Uh, anyway, guys, you know, it, it's it, all, all of these damned if you do and damned if you don't. It's this whole debate about uh, indigenous people, should they be allowed to live in national parks? You're damned if you do and damned if you don't. If you try to keep the gorillas from getting corona panic, uh, they're gonna get shot for bush meat instead. You're damned if you do and damned if you don't. It's the whole geoengineering thing. Where we're, 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 we're damned if we don't uh, G, uh, you know, chemtrail the planet. We're damned if we do chemtrail the planet. You can go on and on and on with the damned if you do, damned if you don't report. 
here's a real weird talk about damned if you do and I was just talking about damned if you do and damned if you don't decline of threatened bird highlights planning importance of bison releases so you know th this is uh, talking about the debate uh, of should we reestablish you know the these bison herds out uh, in, in in the American West obviously sounds like a good thing well guess what the, the damn bison they're releasing these bison out there and uh, because the bison being released are fenced what are they doing they're they're trampling the nest of ground uh, of ground nesting birds this bird the bobo link uh, Basil, don't you have bobo links up on, in your pasture? Uh, so, in, in giving the bison a, a, a shot, we're, we're trampling the bobo links because uh, they, they don't have free range, you, you know, in a, in, in, in a real uh, tall prairie ecosystem. The bison and the bobo links would be you know in a symbiotic relationship but if you if you reintroduce bison and you put them inside a fence they're going to start trampling uh, the bird nest um, we're going to call this the uh we're going to title uh today's video the damned if you do and damned if you don't round up Okay, well, this one is pretty much uh, damned if you do. <clears throat> Illegal roads pierce indigenous reserves and national parks in the Colombian Amazon. Then we're going to have another story from Ecuador. But while we're in Colombia, a series of roads in the Colombian Amazon are cutting through national parks and an indigenous reserve. Yes. Residents of the reserve and environmental experts say the authorities have done little to stop the expansion of the road network. No, the authorities are doing everything to expedite the expansion of the road network, which has been accompanied by extensive deforestation. Yes, experts say well-funded operators are behind this pattern of deforestation and the la land grabbing that follows. Do you think so? Residents of the indigenous reserve already f facing violence from ex-guerrillas who once controlled the region say they are worried about the roads bringing in more settlers to occupy their territory. Do you think so? Uh, we're going to come up with another identical story from Ecuador here in a minute. But anyway, I've, 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 I've had this rant before and, and maybe people think that I've been joking this is not a joke guys okay I mean all you can do is laugh uh, to end illegal deforestation Brazil may legalize deforestation entirely Governmental actions have fueled skepticism about Brazil's real commitment to its climate goals and pledges the country embraced at the COP26 summit. In 2021, the Brazilian Amazon experienced the highest deforestation rates in at least 15 years, almost all of it illegal amid a weakening of environmental protections and bills currently before Brazil's parliament threaten to undermine even these protections even further and incentivize more logging and land grabbing and the way they do this is by 
you know, guys, one more time, there is no difference between illegal and legal logging. Logging is logging. Do you get it? Don't you see? As uh, Bill Hicks would say, don't you see? It doesn't make any difference. So there's a damn easy way to uh, take illegal logging in Brazil down to zero. Just make uh, it legal to log every damn tree in the Amazon rainforest. End of illegal logging. Oh. Okay. What's going on in Guatemala? Death threats and friction with military force. Death threats and friction with military force Guatemalan rangers to flee. A special task force of park rangers has spent the last six years patrolling some of the hardest to reach parts of the Maya Biosphere Reserve in northern Guatemala. Uh, the seven-member task force travels through the rainforest combating drug traffickers, illegal loggers, and poachers. Yes, but Guatemala's weak prosecution of environmental crimes has put the rangers in danger. Yes, after enduring years of threats and following an altercation with the Guatemalan military, many members of the special force are now applying for asylum abroad, leaving the future of the task force and the protected area in question. All right, do you want a wild bird on the Hush Hush in Singapore? There's a Facebook group for that. Singapore's live bird trade is thriving on Facebook, where it is largely unlicensed. Yep, yep, yep. There are now apparently 44 Singapore-based face groups tra trafficking in wildlife. All right, we have the airboats cranking up on Christmas Eve. It is going to, what did Vegematic say? I said, it's going to sound like the Indy 500 out here this weekend uh, in uh, the Point Lonesome Swamp as the clueless morons on their airboats. Here it goes for the next, what, 60 hours. I'm gonna be listening to this shit. Uh, all right, we're gonna skip the hopium. Okay, do you remember uh, I'm sure you do. I'm, I'm sure you woke up this morning with the first thing on your mind, remembering all of those uh, horrific wildfires in the Pantanal wetlands last year. Well, they've tallied it up. Wildlife death toll from 2020 Pantanal fires tops 17 million. A new study has found that 17 million animals died in the Pantanal fires in 2020. The researchers came to this estimate by conducting distance sampling surveys walking tracks of the Pantanal shortly after the fires and counting the number of dead vertebrates they encountered. However, researchers say this is likely to be an underestimate since animals may have died underground. I bet the 2020 fires burned four and a half million hectares, otherwise known as 11 million acres of the Pantanal, about 30% of the entire biome. 
All right, we have a long article about the drought in the U.S. Uh, all right, <coughs> I think I mentioned last week about some meeting they were planning about deep sea mining to plan the future of deep sea mining. Wow, here's the report. Deep sea mining regulators' latest meeting on rules only muddies the water more. Hmm. Delegates of the International Seabed Authority. Yes. Uh, met recently and discussed whether to adopt a set of rules, a mining code, to allow deep sea mining to commence in as little as 18 months. Deep sea mining is a controversial activity that was pushed a closer to the horizon. Uh, we already talked about that starting up off the coast of Nauru. Uh, most of the member states appear to be in favor of pushing forward with the mining code. Yes. Um, the authority has a dual mandate to give nations equal opportunity and access to mine the seabed as well as to protect the ocean from mining's harmful effects. Yes, but some experts say, some experts say that the International Seabed Authority holds favorable views of deep sea mining. Hmm, imagine that. Okay, more hopium. Uh, we've mentioned this one before. What happens if you protest against mining in Indonesia? Indonesians protesting against mines run growing risk of criminalization. Indonesians defending their lands against mining operations are frequently met with criminal prosecution and dubious charges. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, in 2020, 69 Indonesians were criminalized with cases involving disputes with mining companies. I bet. Uh, all right, we have European supermarkets saving the planet by taking Brazilian beef off the menu. Good for you guys. Okay. I love it when they ask a question. Can a new wave of climate fiction inspire climate action? You know, talking about that this new genre now developing are these dystopian novels based in the near future, you know, after the, uh, you know, after all of the various tipping points have tipped and whatnot, and it's actually called cli-fi, climate fiction. So the answer to the question, can a new wave of climate fiction inspire climate action is no, it cannot. Moving along. Uh, okay. Now you have to go back to 2019. You only had to go back to 2020 to remember those fires in the Pantanal. Do you remember the fires in Indonesia in 2019? I'm quite sure if you're anything like me, you woke up this morning thinking about the 2019 wildfires in Indonesia. <clears throat> 2019 fires in Indonesia were twice as bad as the government claimed they were. Hmm. 
independent researchers have identified 3.1 million hectares, otherwise known as over seven and a half million acres of area that were burned during Indonesia's 2019 fires, nearly double the official government estimate. Do you think so? Uh, activists say that government officials are likely to push back against their findings that contradict the official narrative. Yes, David Gavo, a co-author of the new study, was deported from Indonesia last year after publishing pre preliminary findings of a large burned area that uh, you know, so that that's what you get. I guess you just if they if they can't throw you in jail if you're not from it, and they, you know they just uh, get rid of you. All right, <clears throat> asking the question: <coughs> Where does the Greater Mekong's illegal timber go? Not all lumber is created equal. Within the greater Mekong region, high-quality hardwoods such as Burmese teak and rosewood are particularly value and valuable and have been logged almost to extinction. Burmese rosewood is highly sought after in China for furniture, while Burmese teak is popular in the European ship building sector as decking for super yachts. Do you think so? Uh, the importation of Burmese timber uh, is officially against the law in the European Union. However, shipments continue to leak into the region through countries where enforcement is weaker, such as Italy and Croatia. Take a wild guess what is going on in, in Ethiopia as war rages a 400-year-old conservation site is scarred by battle. Uh, do you think so? Okay, we said we mentioned this in Colombia, so let's go next door to Ecuador. Oil highway bears down on uncontacted indigenous groups in Ecuador's Yasuni. The construction of a controversial oil road in Ecuador's Yasuni National Park has expanded rapidly during the Corona Panic hmm. and has now reached the buffer area of a core zone in the park that is home to uncontacted indigenous peoples. The groups are the last two indigenous nations living in voluntary isolation in Ecuador, and the oil project puts them in imminent danger. <coughs> uh, activists warn. Their activists are, war are concerned about the state-owned Petro Ecuador's plans to continue building the road and oil platforms within the buffer zone, something that was made legal under a 2019 executive order. Conservationists say this order violates the rights of the two nations and the Constitutional Court is now reviewing a challenge filed against it. Remember, uh, you know, Ecuador is famous for one of the biggest bullshit greenwashing uh, ploys of, um, of the past century. You know, in their constitution, giving nature, you know, just nature, uh, and indigenous people the same rights as Ecuadorian citizens. 
you can see how uh, the Ecuadorian constitution giving constitutional rights to nature is playing out just as we predicted it would. Uh, okay, two more and we're going to call it a wrap. Uh, two more from the Amazon. Brazil's Suzano Corporation boasts that its pulp wood plantations are green. Well, until they cut them down. But critics disagree. Suzano, the world's largest pulp export exporter is strongly promoting its new green agenda. Yes, its plantations can help curb the global climate crisis, the company is saying. Uh, some conservationists agree. Yes, but other environmentalists say the expansion of eucalyptus tree monoculture is causing widespread environmental damage in Brazil. Plantation carbon sequestration is minimal, they argue, while pulp, pulp wood factories are highly polluting and eucalyptus forests lack the biodiversity of rainforest. Moreover, they say eucalyptus plantation expansion is resulting in the usurpation of natural lands and the expulsion of traditional and indigenous communities. Yep, yep, yep. But we are going to wind up as long as we're in the Amazon rainforest as I continue talking to myself one more barrage of droughts weakens Amazon's capacity to bounce back, study finds. <clears throat> In the last two decades, the Amazon rainforest has been impacted by increasingly intense and frequent droughts the most severe occurring in 2005, 2010, and 2015. A new study show that stretches of forest affected by drought have taken between one and three years to recover their growth rate, while droughts expect, are expected to worsen because of global warming, scientists warn that the Amazon's capacity for carbon absorption will be increasingly compromised. They highlight that efforts to stabilize the climate will depend on combating deforestation in the Amazon. Yeah. Well, I guess they mean the illegal deforestation, so we're just going to make it all legal deforestation. There you go. But anyway, I have to wrap up the Christmas Eve edition of my uh, ecological meltdown roundup rant because I understand I am talking to myself. And uh, I need to go forage for food in the refrigerator of a uh, suicide and uh, sit here and figure out how I'm spending Christmas alone in the Point Lonesome Swamp. But we will be back on New Year's Eve to wrap up the Manga Bay uh, report as 2022 beckons one week from tomorrow. Ho, 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 my guys.